what are we doing? If you'd have been here 230 years ago, you'd have seen a workforce like no other. The most dangerous working conditions you've seen in your life. Of all the landscapes that we visit, this is quite possibly one of the most terrifying for a couple of different reasons, which we'll show you both today. That is more terrifying on the basis that the fence is down over there. And what that means is we're about to see, we're about to approach the uh, Sapton Canal Tunnel. Now the Sapton Canal Tunnel is terrifying for two different reasons. The first of which requires us to go above Sapton Canal Tunnels to see some rather scary holes in the ground. Before we do either of those two terrifying things, Steve, who has joined us today, a little Hello bit more on Steve later, um, Steve has just pointed out something that we never saw last time when we came here, which is an aqueduct, but also it's a siphon aqueduct, yeah. Steve, right? When a canal is too low for the river to sort of go under it, or uh, you know, can't go over it or whatever like that, you've, you've got to get it under some way. So you have the river level on two sides, the canal, and they basically invert down with a pipe and then under, and it pulls itself through like a siphon. Sapperton Canal Tunnel once formed an integral part of the Thames and Severn Canal. Sitting at over two miles long, it was once the world's longest canal tunnel. But its length isn't really the most impressive feature. It's over a staggering 14 foot wide. Now we've just come out of Sapperton, so we're not far from the Northern Portal, and you'll notice on this main road that we're walking along has lots of clumps of trees. In those clumps of trees are terrifying thing number one. Let's have a quick look in this one. We know we're not going to see anything overly obvious, but it'll give you a little taster of what's to come just up ahead. So we've just stepped inside one of those clumps I've mentioned and they're in a line along this section of the canal tunnel standing high above it and if you have a look at the lidar for these tunnels you'll notice that there's a mound in each of them so what we're looking at now Steve I guess would be the spoil yeah so they literally dumped it where they took it out yeah uh, so it surrounds the shafts uh, and uh, you get this mound uh, around all of them really right so if we now we don't know where the actual shaft would be, do we? There's no... Exactly. It's, it's, quite, it's quite a large mound. It's a very large mound. Um, but if we climb up on top of it, I'll show you exactly what we mean. Right, so ahead of us now is this, um, what looks deliberately, not deliberately, but sunken bit in the ground. We're fairly confident that there is a shaft down there. Wouldn't be standing on that, agreed? Definitely not. They'd have covered it over. Could be rotten wood there. Yeah and in you go. Yeah. So we're probably a good 50 meters plus down that shaft, which is a heck of a long way. Yeah. Um, but you can't see much, so let's go and show you something which you can see. Now when we came here last time to the woods just ahead of us and we stuck a GoPro down the hole, well, that was great fun, but we kind of just stopped, packed up, didn't look at the footage, went home, got excited about the footage. We didn't go any further in that forest to see what else there was. And I'm pretty confident there are some more things to see. So that's why I thought we'd make this number one of two things we're doing today that are quite terrifying. Steve's just pointed out that one of the shafts is right beside the main road over there on the north side of it. And it's actually fenced off that particular one because it's not in the woods. Still staggered by 26 shafts along this route, giving them, that's 52 entrances from each shaft and then the portals perhaps. So maybe 54 working faces and they would then, uh, the two mile tunnel, they would then work from each of these 54 faces and build a pilot tunnel. And that would only be, I don't know, a meter tall or thereabouts, not even be able to stand up at it. Oh yeah. 
Okay, we're stood on top of the line of the canal. Steve has already scouted off into the woods towards an unmarked shaft. And we can see the um, telling mound of earth ahead of us. Well, I've never seen this one before, Steve. This is good. But look at that, mound in the middle of nowhere. And who'd have thought that if you weren't a uh, canal aficionado like us legends, then... Um, <laughs> that's going on a Patreon video. Um, then, uh, yeah, who'd have known that that there is one of the most terrifying things you'll see in terms of Georgian slash Victorian infrastructure. Georgian. George II. Yeah, it was, because he came down to visit Did he? the um, site. Because this was a bad place to stay. All the, uh, ah. the Lars came down here, and it was quite a... Um, quite a day. Almost like a um, celebrity type thing at the time, yeah. with all the... And you can imagine that. This here. was, at the time, the longest time in the world. Yeah. It was so early in the canal. Yeah, well. so 1799. Like 17, right. yeah. This is another reason why you should go and watch Steve's channel, because Steve has this absurd mind full of facts about canals, and when you watch one of his videos, you'll see exactly what I mean. Right, the mound. This is really weird because, well, it's not weird at all, it just tells you what they did with the spoil. We're actually stood on spoil now, not um, the shaft itself, because right ahead of us is the single most terrifying thing you'll see in your life. The whole spoil heap there shows you the amount of earth it took to get this out. And there's a spoil heap all around us over here as well, all over the back, the spoil. And it tells you how deep this is, it really does. Just a reminder from the last video that we made, well, we did stick the GoPro down there. So we're now gonna walk 100 yards further south, 150 yards further south along the line of the canal. We're still on the massive pile of earth. Look at this, it's huge. All this came out of that hole in the ground, so it tells you how much there was. Just mad. Right, 100 yards that way, we're gonna show you another one. Oh God, this is even more terrifying because the fence is a bit sketchy. Yeah, so this is another one. one. This is good. This is great because it's exactly what I wanted to find today. Evidence of more shafts. That is more terrifying. On the basis that the fence is down over there um, and it doesn't look like a shaft. It looks more like, well, you can still see some of the original wood planks that they put over the top. I think they put something like railway sleepers just over the top of it in a really sketchy manner. And I think that's one of those that's still left there now. Um, but absurdly dangerous never really failed to be completely grasped by the fact that if you'd have been here 230 years ago, you'd have seen a workforce like no other. You'd have seen people being lowered down the shaft, buckets of earth being lifted up, the most dangerous working conditions you've seen in your life. And we're right here now in this environment and it's peaceful and tranquil and full of wildlife. And yet there's these terrifying earth lumps just seemingly coming out of the ground with the shafts still in place today. It's really quite terrifying. Speaking of terrifying things, I think we're done here now, Steve. We've shown the, the lovely viewers some of these shafts and how dangerous they are. Do you fancy going in the tunnel? Sounds like a plan. Well, Gary said the hose. Um, interesting, Gary was in the video when we came here last. He was the one that built the trolley to go down the shaft. Oh, yeah, yeah. The O's. That has got old. Oh, we need to up a bit more. So if you haven't worked out already, the second terrifying thing that we're going to show you today is inside the tunnel. Um, there's a collapse around about two or three hundred yards, we think. Um, how far we'll get, I don't know. We don't know how deep it is, how shallow it is, how effective the boat's gonna be. Um, let's go and have a look. Right, the goal is to get past the gate, first of all, because we think it gets a bit deeper past the gate and we can then get in this. Right, we're only 10 yards in. It's very shallow, that's our first concern at the moment. Um, that we're not going to actually be able to sit in the boat without grounding it. Um, we're also causing a lot of silt to come up. Um, but eh, we'll just see how far we get. All good. Mm. 
Yeah. So we're in the boat, which is good. Steve, I probably need to go further forward and you probably need to go further backwards. Because <laughs> that's good, we need to distribute a bit, don't we? We, we had high hopes, um, did Steve and I, about today. We've been planning this for quite some few weeks, right, Steve? Yeah. Um, we're now about 20 yards in and we've burst the boat. <laughs> the, literally, the bottom of the boat is bursting. We're just sat there going. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go another 10 yards and see how we feel. At this point forward, we didn't know what was for the best. We debated for a few moments. I took a few more steps forward, around 10 yards, and twice in that period, I got my foot stuck in the silt. Now, without a boat, this really wasn't for me. Steve, however, Steve wanted to go on. So for the next few minutes, this is Steve's trip to the first collapse. So whilst we journey in the tunnel with Steve, let's remind ourselves of a few important facts. This tunnel is over two miles long. It's over 14 feet wide, and at its time of construction was the longest in the world. 26 shafts were used to construct this. 1911 saw the first collapse, and therefore, the canal was abandoned thereafter. A few more were reported in the 1960s. It's understood that the collapse is at only this end. Now, that's about three or 400 yards in, and you'll see those very shortly. But from the other end, well, it's reported that you can go at least a mile and a half. But the danger there is the quality of the air. As in, I put, I put my like, toe down to try and find the base and it was just going deeper and deeper and deeper and I couldn't get my foot. Steve's like, nah, it's fine. He's mad, he's properly mad. He's crazy, yeah. But he's going in, he's got my GoPro and he's getting some footage. Um, love Steve. Go and subscribe to Steve's channel just for this alone. <laughs> <laughs> Before Steve reaches the collapse, you'll notice on the left-hand wall, the northeastern side, well, there's a few bulges there, again, from the Fuller's clay, which look incredibly unsafe. One thing Steve noticed as he reached the collapse is how hard the ground was. Yes, the clay had fallen down here, but it's now been covered by the, the calcite from all the water and limestone that had been dragged down through it. You'll see the actual construction of the tunnel now, because you can see the layers of bricks here, three or four layers. Now, one thing that Steve wasn't keen to do is go on any further. Obviously, he's on his own at this point. But as you can see, if I slow the images down here in the distance, well, there's at least two more collapses within reach. And apparently just beyond those, another 20 or 30 yards, is a complete blockage of the tunnel. You can't go any further. Now, this is on the plans of the Cotswold Canal Trust. They do want to extend this canal right through this tunnel. Whether I'll see that in my lifetime or not is up for debate. While Steve comes out, I really want to show you the portal because now this has been restored probably, I think, 30, 40 years ago, in 1996. So a good nearly 30 years ago, 27 years ago. But I assume back to its original state, I think this end and the other end are listed buildings now, which is um, a good thing. It is amazing. Yeah. So how was that, Steve? It was actually, once you got that side. Really? That yeah. was hard sailing yeah, with I think we're in the base of the canal now. Yeah. Um, but there were, there were spots which are still quite sticky. Yeah. Uh, could easily get stuck, so don't do it. So you ploughed on? Yeah. Guys, brave man now, Steve, brave man than I. Right, straight away after leaving the portal of Daneway, all of a sudden the heat's hit us a bit. Even the sort of the 20 yards towards it, you can really feel the difference in temperature as the air is coming through, despite the fact it's blocked. Right, we are done today. We're gonna to go and have a quick um, bite to eat in the pub, the Dane way. Um, big thanks to Steve. Massive thanks to Steve for carrying on where I said, <laughs> no, Steve, you crazy fool. Um, but for me, Rebecca and Steve, a big thanks for watching. We'll see you this time next week.